Good evening and welcome to Macedonia Baptist Church. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the safety that you've given us thus far, Lord, with uh, the coronavirus. And I pray that things seem to be getting back to normal. And I pray that things would just continue to die down and we'd be able to continue to reopen things. And you just grant us safety, Father. I uh, thank you that we've been able to have these services, Lord. And uh, they've just been a blessing to us. And I pray that they would continue to be to speak through Pastor Law. And I pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. And listen to my fearful tale of the ocean blue. How a man got swallowed by the whale. Yes, I know it's true. Jonah, Jonah, did not wait immediately. Jonah, Jonah, down in the depths of the deep blue sea. Then a great big fish that God had made swallowed Jonah. So we want to look at the book of uh, Jonah uh, this evening. So if you have Bibles, so turn with me. And uh, we want to actually focus uh, on chapter 2, verse uh, 1. This is where we get our thoughts uh, for tonight. Uh, the God of second chances. So uh, the book of Jonah, in uh, chapter number 2, we're going to be looking at. And uh, talk about the thing about uh, Jonah. And that uh, have you ever... Uh, long for opportunity to undo things in your life. You know, we, uh, we all make mistakes. None of us are perfect uh, people. There's only one that was perfect. His name is Jesus Christ. Uh, we all make mistakes, but we are to rise from our failures. The Bible says, For just man fall seven times, rise up again, but the wicked fall <laughs> shall fall to mischief. You know, we all make mistakes. We all, that, um, you know, look back at our lives, I'm sure that we have re regrets, and we wish we could do things uh, uh, over. And that uh, we all made mistakes in our finances, um, in our careers, in our parenting, and marriages, will lead us uh, to wish we could uh, have another chance, an opportunity to begin uh, again. But uh, unfortunately, we don't get that. Um, you know, you can't get back in the past, but we can uh, focus on the future. Uh, Jonah's spirit reminds that a child of God can begin and get another chance uh, after we, we fail, after we, we mess up. I'm glad that um, when uh, when the uh, clay in the potter's hands gets uh, out of sorts, I'm glad that the potter, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he can uh, take the clay and mold it once again. Uh, reminds us that uh, we can serve a God who uh, will use those who repent and return to him. I'm glad that God is a God of second chances. I'm glad when we mess up, uh, that when we disobey, when we backslide on, on Him, although we shouldn't do that in the first place, yes, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, there's uh, always uh, that's the consequences of sin. We had the marks. And that, um, you know, but uh, thank God for God's forgiveness, uh, that God is um, uh, forgiving, and that uh, God will give us another chance. If we will turn back to Him and confess our sin, how um, many plenty of mistakes in my life? Uh, I'm sure that uh, you know, all of us will confess uh, to that. Uh, I'm certainly glad that God did not give up on me, uh, but I say He keeps uh, coming back until I let Him have His way in my heart. You know that, that remember that soul have His way with Thee, and that should be our desire for God to have. His way in our hearts and lives. In the book of Jonah, 
and we see this uh, this prophet uh, that this uh, this man of God uh, that he's told to do something uh, yet he 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 does just the opposite he goes in the opposite direction which God told him uh, to go you know sometimes we struggle with the will of God and what God wants us to do and sometimes we refuse to do so uh, we should uh, be like the Lord uh, Jesus uh, in the garden he prayed Lord not my will but thy will be done you know that should be our first there to surrender our lives our wills to his and that uh, uh, that I uh, praise God that God is merciful God is long suffering God is uh, gracious and we see that uh, here uh, concerning the Lord the Lord as um, as Jonah as uh, he, he he said this for I knew that our gracious God and merciful slow to anger and great kindness and repentance of the of evil uh, this is what God did to the uh, Ninevites they were Gentiles uh, and that uh, they were very uh, cruel people that we're going to talk about in just a mo moment but uh, God's God of mercy and, and grace and long suffering uh, to all people and so there's times when we have uh, made a disaster over our lives uh, there are times when we turn deaf ears sometimes God uh, that has to give att attention and we see this with this uh, prophet uh, Jonah uh, sometimes God sends storms in our lives just like he did with uh, Jonah to bring us back uh, to him you know that Bible says that uh, every child of God receives uh, chastening in fact the Bible tells us or teaches us that uh, with uh, if we uh, or without chastisement that we are illegitimate uh, that uh, that we're not of his because God will chase us when we uh, disobey and so God used a storm uh, here in this uh, book uh, that uh, and that uh, Jonah he stole into the sea we have this great fish that swallows uh, Jonah and he spends three days and three nights in the the belly of the great well and uh, sometimes God's um, uh, truth may feel that they're disqualified for serving him because of past perish and uh, and sins uh, and you know that's you know sometimes that may uh, be the case you may not be able to uh, do a certain thing uh, because of your past sins but I thank God that God is a God of forgiveness uh, that God can use us once again uh, and uh, Jonah teaches us that God is God of second chances the prophet Jonah is an example of this it's a unique uh, book of uh, the Bible just a short book uh, just uh, four four chapters uh, in my Bible, it's uh, two and a half pages long. I read uh, the entire book this, um, uh, you know, that earlier today. Uh, that uh, Jonah is only Old Testament prophet on record whom God sent to a heathen uh, nation. Usually, that we have the prophets uh, going to the nation of, of Israel and uh, Judah and preaching. Uh, yet, uh, this one was called to go to a Gentile nation. I'm glad that uh, you know, one of the things that the book of John teaches us is that God, he loves not just the Jews, but God also loves the Gentiles. He, he, his desires for all to uh, be saved. And so John the prophesied in the Northern Kingdom during the reign of uh, Israel's uh, Jeroboam II, uh, Second Kings, uh, 1425, of course, John prophesied uh, that uh, Jeroboam II would restore Israel. And uh, which uh, which did take place. Uh, it's a great book. In fact, the word "great" uh, we find that eight times in this book. Uh, four times uh, calls Nineveh a uh, great city, uh, a great wind, a great tempest, and a great fish. Uh, then the great kindness uh, in chapter four, verse number two. Uh, so eight times the word "great." A uh, small book, yet yeah, it's a great book. Many lessons that we can learn from this um, uh, book of the Bible. And uh, that's the focus on tonight is that God is a God of second chances. We see uh, in chapter 2, verse 1, that the word of the Lord came from Jonah the second time. Uh, so the setting is in the city of Nineveh, uh, which is just a large uh, city. And we see that uh, you know, from the Bible also. Uh, that um, in, in history is walls uh, that uh, been told uh, that um, uh, towered 100 feet 
were strengthened by uh, 1,200 towers. The walls were wide enough, enough for three chairs to drive on them. Uh, that uh, also there was a moat that surrounded the walls. The size, um, and John tells us uh, that uh, three days of journey, uh, 120,000 plus people. Uh, the boat was about 60 miles uh, wide. The city that uh, was founded by Nimrod, uh, the hunter, who built uh, the Tower of Babel. And that, uh, and then later on, we have the book of Jonah that refers to Nineveh, also the book of Nahum, which uh, later on concerning uh, that their destruction, yes, uh, that they repent of their sin and are saved. Uh, but then there's another generation that rose up, and that uh, you know, that time of uh, when uh, Nahum he prophesied concerning their destruction. And then that city was never rebuilt after its fall. Uh, New Testament Christ refers to the habits of Nineveh, how that they they repented from the preaching of Jonah, while that he criticized and condemned the religious leaders because the Messiah, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, God was in flesh, uh, preaching them the message. Yet they did not take heed to that message. But years ago, that uh, that Jonah. Uh, that reluctant prophet to preach the word of God and the people repented at the preaching of Jonah. Um, and so that the Syrians, as I said uh, earlier, that uh, they were not uh, very good people, that, uh, that uh, uh, there was enemies of, of Israel. In fact, uh, you know, that uh, the Assyrians uh, took the uh, Jews captive uh, later on. But uh, there were people that were wicked and cruel, uh, that, um, that there was the uh, most powerful people for two centuries. They tortured uh, kids, they would burn them alive, uh, they would behead them, their enemies and put them on poles, uh, and uh, that um, uh, outside of the city to, for, to bring fear to the nations. Uh, they were uh, that uh, filet people alive, they were known for their uh, that to cruelty. You know, this war a wicked uh, people. Yet the thing is that God, He loves everybody, no matter how wicked, uh, how unrighteous. The Lord uh, loves everybody, and He loves uh, you know these people, and that uh, that uh, He was wanting them to be saved. They did repent of the preaching of John, and they were uh, saved. And so that the Nevites that uh, they were known to bear their uh, victims up to the necks, saying, "Leave them die." Uh, I mean, just a very wicked uh, nation, and you know, that uh, you know, other uh, things that I put, uh, that uh, number seven, whole cities have been known to commit suicide, rather than fall to the Nehemites, uh, that uh, they were just, you know, that uh, you know, evil uh, nation, uh, yet uh, that the Lord loves them, and born this prophet to go and preach the word of God to them, so that they will be saved. Uh, so some of the myths, the, the story of John, However, uh, Jesus Christ himself refers to Jonah as a historical uh, character. And that, uh, and we mentioned that in the uh, book of Matthew, also the book of uh, Luke. The Lord refers to Jonah in the same context as the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. Uh, Jonah is the only Old Testament character with whom Jesus Christ compared uh, him, himself uh, that directly uh, you know, that, uh, to. He says that there was a that, uh, preacher uh, and uh, greater than um, Jonah's here. Um, then, so Jonah's message on 40 days in Nineveh would be overthrown. And 40 in the Bible uh, that uh, we see that seems to represent testing, time of testing, 40, uh, that uh, rain 40 days, 40 nights during the flood. Uh, Israel spent 40 days in the, or uh, 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus was tempted for 40 days. Um, and so we see number four in the Bible, there's significance uh, concerning tests and type of testing. Uh, the repentance of Nineveh uh, took place about uh, 760 BC. Uh, so that today, uh, we're just going to look at uh, three points. Uh, and uh, we see the running of the prophet, the returning, and the, the recommissioning of the prophet. And that's the third point. All right, let's look at number one. Uh, Jonah was told to go to Nineveh, but he did not uh, go. We see that uh, in verse uh, chapter 1, 
uh, the Bible uh, says um, uh, this, verse 2, Rise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up uh, before me. So he was told to, to go uh, to Nineveh. But, verse 3, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down to it, to go with them on the Tarshish from the presence uh, of the Lord. And so when we think about obedience, uh, we say that there's uh, three or uh, four keys to uh, obedience. You know, when you obey, you need to do it you know, that completely, cheerfully, immediately, and without complaining. And it's interesting that Joel, uh that uh, did the opposite. He did not, you know, he, he was disobedient, right? That uh, he did not do what God told him. He go to to, to uh, Nineveh, but he went to down to Joppa, and then he takes a ship to going to Tarshish with his, his opposite direction, uh, cheerfully. That uh, he was not cheerful. Uh, in fact, he became angry. Uh, we see immediately, of course, uh, he did not do it. Uh, later on, he does it, but you know, delayed obedience is disobedience. And then, no complaining. Of course, uh, Joel, he did uh, complain. And so that uh, when we obey, we need to do it completely, cheerfully, immediately, and without uh, complaining. Uh, Joel was guilty of knowing what to do, but refused to do it. You know, have you ever been guilty of that? Uh, that you know what to do, yet you don't want to do it. So you don't do it. Um, and this uh, field label was east, and he went west, uh, which is the torture for me in Mar day. Spain. Uh, so he went, ran from God and tried to, to do so. Yet, of course, you cannot run from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says that uh, uh, in verse um, number three again, it says, from the presence of the Lord twice uh, there. But you know what? You cannot hide from the presence of God. The psalmist says, whether shall I go from the Spirit or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Uh, you cannot flee from the presence of the Lord. He knew that God was God of mercy, that he was slow to anger, as we read just a little while ago, chapter 4, verse 2, uh, tells us this. And he didn't want the Ninevites uh, to repent. Uh, he was only known to be destroyed uh, by God. Uh, he thinks that God's not doing what God ought to do. Uh, yet God knows what he's doing. God knows what's best uh, for, for us and for people. Notice uh, that uh, we see the Bible talking about he going down, uh, going down to Joppa. Uh, Jerusalem is uh, how higher elevation, so it goes down to Joppa. Joppa is, uh, I have been told that it's the oldest uh, sea port right there on the Mediterranean Sea. And so he goes down to Joppa, and then he goes down into a ship to the cargo uh, place, then uh, to the bottom of uh, the sea uh, later on in the uh, in the great fish's belly, uh, so that uh, when you go uh, turn back from God, you know what where you go, you go down uh, in your life. Uh, people are in danger from falling asleep. We'll see uh, Joel later on. Uh, we see him in a sleep, uh, even though there's a fierce storm uh, you know going on uh, about him, and that uh, the pastors, other people on the ship, uh, that they were terrified. And uh, that they tried to um, uh, you know, uh, survive. They tried to survive. Uh, yet uh, Jonah is uh, fast asleep. Uh, that, and not only physically, but also uh, we can say spiritually too. Uh, often I mean, we talk about people fall asleep in church, but the real tragedy is that many are asleep. And we need to be watchful. The Bible says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be uh, sober. And so, you know, before we, you know, condemn uh, Joel, uh, think about our own lives and where, where we have failed. Uh, God told us to do something, yet we refuse to do it. We go in the opposite direction. I'm sure that if we, uh, you know, if, if we let the Holy Spirit have our hearts, that we all probably say that we have uh, done that in our lives. But you know what? We're not alone. Uh, some of the greatest, uh, greatest men. Uh, that um, and women in times past have done the same thing about Abraham. You know, Abraham uh, failed, and that um, uh, that in, in his life, that 
you know, he, he felt weight upon the Lord. And that, uh, you know, with, with the, the incident with Hagar, uh, Jacob, that he lied to his father, sold his brother's birthright and, and blessed him. Uh, David, you know, he was man after God's own heart, uh, yet he fell in the case with Bathsheba and then half her husband, uh, you know, killed. Uh, Peter, that, uh, that he swore he would not deny Christ, yet he denied him three times before the cock crowed. Um, uh, twice that uh, you know that we all have uh, failed in, in our lives. Uh, yet the thing is that we need to get back. You know, the Bible says, "Just my folks, every time they rise up again." You know how to get back uh, right with God? Well, the idea is of uh, repentance. We get a second chance when we realize that we have blown it. You know that's the first step, uh, admitting that we have done wrong, acknowledging our sin. Uh, we must confess that sin. Uh, as David said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I uh, said, I, conf I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou will forgive us the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Uh, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. You know, that's the first step. Realizing, you know, that admitting that you have done wrong, uh, that uh, we don't like to admit that we're wrong. Yet, uh, sometimes we are, and uh, that we, we don't want to admit our sin, but that's the first step uh, in order to bring restoration, is, is that we have to admit that we have blown it, that we have messed up, that we have done wrong. Uh, and, that, um, and so the best thing to do uh, when we sin is to confess our sin. The Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we must admit that we have done wrong, that uh, and take responsibility for our actions. We need to pray, and we must repent uh, of our sin. And so Jonah here, uh, the Bible says uh, this, verse 1, chapter 2, verse 1, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's uh, belly. And so that uh, he, he prays uh, there. And then verse uh, chapter 3, verse 1, it says, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, uh, saying, I think Larry earlier I said chapter 2, but it's just chapter 3, verse, verse 1, where we find that, that he, the word of the Lord came unto him the second time after he does this, after he admits, and then after he, he prays. And uh, that, that it, it's uh, till now that Jonah been fleeing and hiding. Now, in the great distress, he seeks and, uh, and sought after the Lord. You know, sometimes uh, that God has to afflict us before we, we turn uh, back uh, to, uh, to him. Uh, as the psalmist says, uh, my eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Uh, Joel's uh, thoughts and our anguish turn to the psalms. And that we see uh, that... Um, it, he must know the scriptures, uh, especially that the Psalms, and that uh, that he refers to them in this uh, this prayer of his in chapter number two. Uh, so we need to keep uh, the promise. He says that he vows, uh, "I will pay that I have vowed." Salvation uh, is of uh, the Lord. So we see that um, Jonah he is returned, uh, he repents, and then that he is uh, he. he is called once again recommissioned in uh, chapter number three in verse one. The Bible says the word of the Lord came unto John the second time, uh, saying, and what does he do? And what did he say? Uh, well, he gives them the, the, the same commission that he gave to them earlier. Uh, he says, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Now, uh, so John arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. And so that now he, he obeys. You know, earlier, uh, the Bible says he says to, to, to uh, rise, go to Nineveh. The, then verse 3 says, chapter 1, verse 3, but John arose uh, up to flee unto Tarshish. But now he arises and he goes to uh, Nineveh. We see his... Uh, he is recommissioned after this word Lord came to him, uh, came with the same commission he received the first time. Was God's plan for Jonah to go 
And it was still God's plan for him to go. That was God's will for his, his life. You know, when we, some people will say, what? How do I know God's will for my life? Well, one of the main keys is surrender. Uh, that, you know, where, you know, wherever, whenever, wherever, should be our hearts ever. Wherever you want me to go, Lord, whatever you want me to do, uh, that wherever you want me to go, you know, we should surrender our will to his, his will. That's the key uh, to knowing the will of God for our lives. Uh, and so that uh, God's plan didn't change. So the first time, and I tell him to go, but he ran away from God this time, having learned that lesson, uh, and that sometimes we have consequences. This being, this time he obeys uh, the Lord. The truth is, the Lord has uh, some things he wants us to do. Uh, that um, and uh, that uh, you know, in order for us to know that, we have to surrender our will to His will. Uh, many things God did for you, me, uh, would never be accomplished. Uh, why? Because all the time people. Uh, God has set apart to accomplish the will, have refused to surrender his, uh, their will to, to his will. You know, that song says, uh, the old hymn, I surrender all. You know, give all of ourselves to God. You know, we so little use God because God, we give so little of God, uh, that, that God has so little of our lives. Uh, we run instead of obeying. Uh, when God tells us to do something, you know, what we should do, we should do it immediately completely cheerfully and without uh, complaining four keys to obedience you know Jonah did the opposite of these four things but we need to do these things completely cheerfully immediately and without complaining when the Lord tells us to go we should go and to, to do whatever God wants us to do we should do it completely uh, fully and so in conclusion uh, think about as Christians our failures, uh, we can leave us feel like God would never use us again, uh, that God would never bless us, that God would never, uh, that, um, uh, that we become useless in God's work. Uh, but uh, you know what? You don't have to be uh, like that. God is a God of second chances. Nevertheless, just as uh, we said that God gave Jonah a second chance, God will give us another chance uh, too when we make ourselves available to God. The greatest ability is availability. Uh, make yourself available to God and God can use you. Uh, just remember it's not every day that someone uh, will give you a second chance. You know, that some, you get a job somewhere, but then you really blow it, and then you get fired from that job, and you mess up, and that you don't get a second chance. However, uh, Jehovah is a God of second chances. Uh, God will give us a, a second chance, third chance, so on and so forth. If we will what? If we admit that we have done wrong and that we confess our sin to God and we repent of our sin, God will forgive us and our fellowship with God can be restored. And then you know, later on that God can use us uh, once again. No matter what you have done, how you feel, that if we're willing to repent, to turn things around and obey, God will give you another uh, chance. Uh, these people, among many others, have failed. I uh, got that some point in their lives. I mentioned others, you know, Abraham, you know, David, Peter, uh, you know, many others we have uh, talked about uh, from the Bible and also in history. However, God did not give up on them. And the praise the Lord for that. And I'm glad that God did not give up on you and you and me, even though we all have failed and made mistakes and sinned and their own and, and disobeyed. And yet, uh, when we come to Him, that God is God of Forgiveness. Well, I come to realize the best of God's servants have made foolish mistakes. Uh, and this can be a lesson for us that uh, you know, they made mistakes. You know, Abraham, uh, you know, Peter, uh, that uh, David, uh, these made mistakes, but God used them once again when they got back on track. If you have disobeyed the Lord, confess to Him, repent of it, then uh, the Lord Lord will come to you the second time. Thank God. I'm glad that uh, the Lord, Jehovah, is a God of second, third, fourth chances. You know, a just man falls down seven times, but then rises up again. I'm glad that uh, that uh, that the, the Lord doesn't uh, depart, doesn't throw the clay away. Uh, when the clay gets marred in His hands, I'm glad that He can reform us and transform us uh, by His His power and the Holy Spirit of God who lives within us. All right. Well, let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful that we come. This evening, 
Uh, we thank you for uh, the fact that you are God of second chances. We see that here in the book of Jonah. I pray, Father, that uh, with all of us, that if we have messed up, we, if we have sinned, we have done wrong, or I pray that we will admit that sin, confess that sin, repent of it, and that our fellowship with you can be restored and you can use us once again so the word of God can come to us the second time. And we pray these things in Jesus and his name.